This video will be all still pictures uh, regarding various components of the steering on the Mark II Jaguar. Again, as always, hope you find it of interest. The first picture here is just the, all the steering linkage. Then we come on to the steering box itself. As I've mentioned in previous videos, take as many pictures as you can, otherwise you may well regret it. These current pictures of the steering box are ones I'd taken for the first time I did the steering and was cleaning things up and then decided I would take the steering box apart and see if I could fix it and uh, readjust it. That unfortunately turned out not to be true. I did get it to work and I got it to work quite well but it just wasn't good enough. I do not have the expertise or maybe the correct tools to actually do it. And believe me, inside that little box there are lots of pieces. This, as previously mentioned, is something you must make sure you check and take a photograph of different alignments for different countries, in other words whether you are left hand drive or right hand drive. As you can see here there are lots of components. All of those balls go into uh, little cups that slide up and down the worm gear and believe me they are fun to get back in. It took me quite some time and obviously I used grease to hold them in place. There as you can see is the worm drive itself and the cups that the uh, ball bearings go into and on this there is a lot of spaces, a lot of shims. You must make sure you get those back in the right order checking end float etc. Um, that was probably one of the areas where I didn't get it quite right because although the box worked it just it wasn't as smooth as it should have been and maybe that was just a, an adjustment on the top that I didn't get quite right but the professionals that did do it they got it absolutely perfect um, and that company was in uh, I think it was Scottsdale I'm not sure um, they were called Benchworks so uh, that's over here in sunny Phoenix, Arizona. Look them up if you need your steering box done. Um, they will accept you to ship it to them and then they'll ship it back of course. All of which costs. And now this picture as you can see there's lots and lots of shims. Just a simple view of the inside of the gearbox with the lid removed um, and the points that need to be adjusted and the worm gear itself. Also you can see one of the uh, um, idler arm ends that uh, tell you which direction they point in. Uh, obviously this is a picture of the steering box mounted on the subframe the first time around. Moving on to the shaft here, as you can see it's in one hell of a state. This again was the first time around that I restored it. Um, you can get the new nylon uh, rollers and the new U-joint. Uh, the U-joint itself, um, 
did come with a grease nipple but I discovered when I put the grease nipple in that it would foul at a certain angle when the steering was turned so uh, once I'd uh, greased it all up I then removed the grease nipple and put in a brass plug which you will see in the picture in a moment Unfortunately, it looks like you can't see the brass plug in those two pictures, which is a great shame. Um, it's a nice little brass plug. It actually finished it off quite nicely once I'd removed the grease nipple. There it is in the center of the UJ. As I said, I believe it finished it off quite nicely. This obviously is uh, one of the uh, idler arms uh, connected to the tie rods. Um, they were not adjustable. Uh, the ones I bought are adjustable, but I did measure the length of these. And then once I'd got that length set, then I set the new adjustable ones to that. Um, I will have to find myself a decent Jaguar shop that can set up the alignment because I do not have the equipment to do that but I'm not going to take it to your usual tyre places as I don't trust them. Here is the steering box showing the idler arm and also the tie rod end and the idler um, arms. You need to know which orientation they go in otherwise you get in a bit of a mess. As can be noted here, the joint attached to the idler, um, it is threaded. One is threaded left hand, one is threaded right hand. So when you have the shaft in the middle between those two, you just twist it and it will push them out or pull them in. This picture here, now I've moved on to the steering wheel. I purchased the steering wheel and column for about $150 on eBay unfortunately by the time it got to me it was damaged uh, the particular person I bought it from I did mention it to them and they were good enough to give me a partial refund which was appreciated the next task I had was to separate this and fix the steering wheel I didn't need the column so I then sold that column on eBay making my purchase even more sweet these pictures now you will see um, all of the cracks um, and splits in the steering wheel I cut them out with a Dremel then filled them at a low level with epoxy for real strength because I wanted to make sure there was some good strength built into the steering wheel when I would uh, finished doing that I made sure there wasn't any epoxy sticking out too high because that's hard stuff and then I used black plastic filler on the final filling of the steering wheel 
as you can see on this one this is the epoxy once I'd finished with the black plastic filler got it to what I believed was the correct level and looking good then I gave it a quick coat of primer uh, obviously plastic primer and if there were any blemishes I dealt with those Uh, granted I could have sent the steering wheel away and had it professionally repaired but I like to try most things myself I don't always succeed but I figured what's the worst that can happen I make a mess of it and have to send it away anyway in this particular case I don't believe what I did was bad and it came out quite well took a little patience you know, a little bit of sanding and filling and sanding and filling and you know how it goes when you're doing these kind of jobs. As you can see some of the cuts I had to make were quite deep to get down to, well actually there is a steel frame underneath um, and once I got down to that I was satisfied that it was deep enough. Um, the idea was to remove the crack and give me enough uh, space to put the epoxy in. Of course, as I previously mentioned, I used black plastic filler. Not that that really mattered. It doesn't matter what colour the filler is because it's all going to be coated in primer and then painted. It was just that was the one I picked up from the store. Fortunately, when it did get broken in transit, the pieces were all there, so I could then uh, glue them or epoxy them, uh, making sure I left enough room for the badge and the brackets that have to fit onto the centre part of the steering wheel. Unfortunately I've got some of these pictures out of sequence but I'm sure you know what you're looking at and can decide which picture came before. Currently my Mark II has a wooden steering wheel on it but I wanted to put what I believe to be an original steering wheel onto my Mark II. 
although later I may well change that for perhaps a Derrington one because I do kind of like the look of them. As you can see in this picture this is the finished article. Um, it's a little premature because I've got the uh, pictures, <laughs> here we go, these pictures of it being primed and rubbed down and primed and rubbed down and as you can see it it takes a fair bit of work but as I said before I enjoy doing these things couldn't resist putting this piece on I'd finished and I just wanted to see how it looked yes sometimes I'm a big child but I don't care. Here we are again now with the finished item. As I've always said, it may not be perfect, but I think it looks pretty darn good. And uh, of course the truth will be when we start driving the car and see how good my repairs are. The steering wheel may shatter into a million pieces, in which case I will have to think again. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video. We're coming to the end, and I'll be putting out another video later. And as always, please like, subscribe, and ding the bell, and uh, you'll be notified of any new videos I put out. Mostly they will be of the Jaguar, but sometimes I do of other vehicles. And if you wish to contact me, please do so at gstargarage at gmail.com and that is g-s-t-a-r-r-g-a-r-a-g-e at gmail.com Thank you and I hope you enjoyed the video.